Wenn ich euch hier mitnehme, wir sind einmal in Belfast. Wir sind auch in Belfast. Yeah, I'm sure there were trained actors I just think. there. Someone, someone bought those people in cryos, and then they were just clapping. It was terrible. We're not, we're not coming back. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Oh, it changes every night, like quite genuinely. Like I think, you know, I think the, the way we approach the life thing. I think we, we like to keep ourselves on our toes. We don't like every night to be the same, we don't rehearse, over rehearse and we don't like just going through the motions. So I think you, you know, when you approach the live experience like that, you find something new and something different in, in every song almost every night. Yeah, it's more to do with the gig really. Yeah. I mean, um, and we've always felt a, a really close dynamic, that's what we always wanted, so you can kind of dipping and out of improvising a little bit and kind of swapping up the songs, you know, uh, from night to night and that's what makes the whole live experience interesting. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we, you know, we always make an effort to choose um, our support, I think it's important, uh, you know, obviously they've, they've established themselves anyway, they've been able to <clears throat> You know, UK, Europe, or in the States, whatever, you know, before. But um, yeah, we're big fans, and um, it's been uh, a yeah, privilege to have them on board, including Creatures of Love, you know. Um, it's a, a nice eclectic bill, I think. It's nice to also, I think for us, is that, you know, we're fucking not interested at all in any, any kind of like keeping things within a genre or whatever. I think it's more to do with, you know, quality, and uh, obviously, the <clears throat> mainly an instrumental band, you know, but they're fucking good at what they do, so yeah, glad to have them with us. Thank you guys. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. When, we're, when we don't see each other, like, Yeah, a it? mutual hate yeah. of um, <laughs> everything that each other stands for. <laughs> 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 I can't add anything to that. <laughs> 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 oh. you know, the, it's all about the music, you know. It's, it's hard to have uh, anecdotes. There's, there's something in every day. Being on the road is such a, uh, an experience where it provides so much variety. Um, you know, that's, what, know. that's what it's all about. You go to new places, meet new people, doing a show, you know, what else can you ask for? You know? Like some medical hysteria. I think that seems to be the main signature that we talk. I don't know, there's so much um, tiredness and drunkenness and just stupidity yeah. and surrealness. Yeah. <laughs> it's rumpish day. Uh, Your chin looks like desperate Dan today. <laughs> just for one night only. Too, too many uh, enjoyable nights. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Too, too many uh, formidable nights. Yeah. Formidable Guinness. That sounds like a porno. <laughs> Don't really know when there is any fucking time you know off, what? you know. Our next day off is on the... No, well, no, that's a travel day. Our next day off is the... I think, well, I think it's the 19th of December is when we finish, finish for the year. And yeah. we're going to go and actually finish our second album. So we'll be, we'll just be in a different headspace. But it's all good, you know what I mean? I don't. I think there's too many whingy pricks in bands who are like, oh, we're fucking in the bus and we're fucking on tour. We've got to record our second album and oh, well, just yeah, so fucking tired. do one. Do you know what I mean? And it's blah, 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 exactly. Blah, blah. And they're almost the shittest bands as well. So I'd be quite happy to go to fucking fuck off. <laughs> I never, I don't complain about anything, ever. I don't think that you need to go anywhere specific to, you know, uh, making stamp music. The, the world's a much smaller place now with the internet. I think the key thing is that you're utterly committed, you know. You, it's, if anything, you could argue that, you know, places where there hasn't really been much of a scene is a, you know, a great place to, to get something going. but. 
It depends what kind of band you are. I mean, we've always felt like we, we were in our, you know, our own bubble. We never really felt part of a scene, and I'm not against scenes per se, but um, we were just more in terms of losing ourselves in what, you know, what we had going. So. I suppose it's, it's different for everybody, really. We moved to London just for logistics, so we couldn't yeah. be in the yeah, same well, exactly. city. So, yeah, there was none of this, like, aspiring, or if that's where the industry is, or that's where the bright lights are. It's just, you know, I honestly believe that if you're writing something that means something, you're fucking good at what you do, then, like, it's pretty much be, be doing it anywhere. And a lot of it just boils down to touring and fucking knowing what you want and blinkers down, and, you know, I don't think our environment is particularly, you know, directed us as a band or... Yeah, it's fucking tenacity, whatever that means, you know, you don't have to be a cunt or anything like that, it's fucking tenacity, it's needing to do what you do, not trying to do it because you want sort of external things like fame or whatever. Okay, that might work for some people, but you are setting yourself up for potentially a fall if that's why you're getting into it. For us, it's always been about we believe in what we're writing and success isn't being the most fucking popular band in the world. If it happens, it, that'll happen naturally. We believe in what we're doing and everything else is just like, do you want to get involved or you don't? If you don't, we're happy either way. I don't think we want to put any time constraints on it. I think it's a very dangerous thing when you start saying, like, I'm going to finish it by, by now. I think that's important. I've got a feeling it'll be sometime yeah, next year. Yeah, you know, know, I think quite naturally it'll happen at some point next year. At the moment we're just enjoying doing lots and lots of doing and writing and just seeing how we've how we've grown up a little bit, how we've changed and as individuals and, and as a band and, you know, we just kind of get it all out of our systems if you if you like. And I think, you know, I, I definitely don't want us to feel pressured by time or, or overanalyze, you know, overanalyze the thing. Yeah, it's, it's an important thing, it's not something that you want to do lightly, we really, uh, you know, the album, the format of an album is really precious to us, uh, it's not, we don't want to just put a bunch of songs together, it's got to have a continuous, you know, uh, consistent kind of voice, and, um, and also to capture, and so, I mean, I think it'll be some, at some point, maybe the middle of next year, but to actually put a definite time on it. And the first album captured a lot of like the year that we had and you know, I kind of think that's 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 how we write it's the that's the, the the artistic bent of this band it's, it's very truthful and it's personal and that you know I think just that comes hand in hand just need a bit a bit of time just to figure it all out, you know. Yeah. Well, no pressure. I think the thing that made the first album feel Maybe just not it not that difficult, but maybe just different was because we were we were promoting the EP so heavily. We, we you know we had so many invites to tour the world and you know we were doing everything in kind of tandem. So we were, we were touring you know non-stop and you know um, working on the, on the first album. So I think you know for us I think that's something that we can still do. We still very much work with the two kind of constantly overlapping. But I, I, you know. Definitely, personally speaking, I'm looking forward to kind of putting maybe a little bit of closure on more and being able to just concentrate fully on And it was a strange finish. path as well because yeah, I think the previous EP, I mean, because we released a bunch of stuff before the debut album, really, you know, we had the EP. Uh, and because of the touring and, and everything being kind of quite scattered in different territories, and the album, some people had lived with some of the songs on the debut album from past releases and I think, if anything, it'd be nice uh, this time around to kind of like clean slate and then um, present it to everybody at all at the same time, you know. Um, and you, you can't be fearful about these things. I think, you know, it's always good to have uh, you know, some good nerves, but I think you've got to always apply a little bit of pressure on yourself and, you know, and everything else you have to forget about. So, yeah, there's always a tiny bit of pressure, but only only internally, not uh, because you, you you want to be utterly proud of what you do. You know, don't want to put anything out there that uh, you only uh, believe in part of me. You know. Well, I think my 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 favourite album always skips between the Queen is Dead 
formed to a role in armed forces or police because then I can never quite make my mind up between those three. My favourite film is definitely Once Upon a Time in America. I see it really on me. Favourite film, possibly uh, Grizzly Man. Uh, I'll say that for today. Grizzly Man by Bernard Hitchcock. Uh, favourite album, possibly. Um, I you experienced Hendrix? It could be either of them. It's just holds so much for me from growing up, from like I'm obsessed, you know. And uh, favorite book? What do you do? Oh, good help. For today, and yeah, I, I won't have anybody frowning on this, but fucking most things by the wild out, I think it's one of the fucking best you writers ever. Oh, I nearly was going to say James and the Giant Peach for my favorite book. There's no shame in that. It's fucking. He puts most like. I changed my mind though because I remembered another book. So what's your favourite book? It's Anna Karenina. Oh yeah, I don't really like that. It's a lot of effort. It's a bit longer than James and the Giant Peach as well. If you wanted to start out easy, don't start with that. That's just a book. I know. Yeah. But there's an audio version of it, surely. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, yeah. And favorite film. film. Favorite film, what was it? Uh, I think. James my favorite. Yeah, that's it, man. Fucking <laughs> Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the Giant Peach. <laughs> <laughs> James and the Giant No. Um, <laughs> no, I think my favorite film is always because it's like. <laughs> <laughs> but if you mix all of all those titles, yeah, you can really get some quite rude titles. Yeah, we're digressing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, um, yeah. <laughs> Tends to be the way. Okay. Uh, what was I going to say? What was the film? Favorite. Was that a film? Oh yeah. Uh, I like The Great Escape. Can't help it. It's just great with um, old Stevie in it. Yeah. You're me. Recently, I've been going back to EXO by Elliot Smith. Oh, yeah. but, um, that's quite depressing. So yeah. maybe start with something. Start your party it's with okay something like Now 23. That, that will help. So what's on Now 23? I don't know. I'd like to think Hadaway's on Now 23. <laughs> Alright, see you later. <laughs> Bye! See you later. Come back next week when I'll be giving gardening tips <laughs> and how to cook Tone in the Hole. <laughs> That's it, bye. <laughs>